Hi, I'm Shay. And I'm Lily. We are so happy that you're here. Here at HBC, we believe that we can dream big because we serve a big God. And it doesn't matter what your past may look like, you still have a bright future. So open up your heart and receive. In Genesis, the first chapter, in verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. And in the image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is, grafted in, joined to him by faith, in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed. By the Holy Spirit. The old things, like previous moral and spiritual conditions, have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings new life. 2 Corinthians 5.20 So we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were making His appeal through us. We, as Christ's representatives, plead with you on behalf of Christ to be reconcil reconciled to God. And then Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being. Not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Too often, we base our value on how somebody else treats us. How successful we are. We base our value on how perfect of a life that we have or are living. If you're trying to get your value from how people treat you, then if they hurt or disappoint you, you're going to feel devalued. If you're basing your value on your achievements, how much money you make, what kind of car you drive, the title behind your name, then if something happens and you don't have that position, or that business goes down, your sense of value will go down also. Some people don't feel good about themselves because they've made a lot of mistakes in life. They're not where they thought they would be at this point in their life. Now they're living full of insecurities and feeling inferior to everything and everyone around them. They're basing their value on their performance. But here's the key. Your value should solely and completely be on the fact that you are a child of God. The creator of the universe breathed his life into you. How somebody treats you what you have in your bank account or how you have lived your life in the past does not change the fact that you're created by the one that makes you valuable. Mistakes you've made does not decrease your value. That means what you did See, here's the thing. What you did is what you did. It's not who you are. I'm, I'm going to say that one more time. What you did is what you did, but it does not define who you are. Today, you could go out and buy a bigger house, drive a more expensive car, get a big promotion that you've worked hard for, but that does not make you any more valuable. Those might increase your net worth, but it does, does not increase your self-worth. 
that comes from a relationship with God and understanding and know that he's got the whole world in his hands and that means your world. I actually know some very rich people that are some of the most insecure people. Value is not based on what you do. Value is not based on your income. Value is not based on who you know. See the enemy. The Bible says it like this. Your enemy, the devil, is seeking whom he may devour. The enemy of your soul is always trying to devalue you. Nothing you ever do, nothing you ever achieve, nothing you ever overcome will make you any more valuable than you already are in the eyes of God. You're valuable right now. Look at somebody and say, you're valuable right now. God calls you a masterpiece. You're one of a kind. You didn't come off an assembly line. You weren't mass produced. God made you unique. And there'll never be another. The difference in a Rolls Royce and a Bentley and a Chevrolet and a Ford is not that one is disqualified as a car or a motor vehicle. It's not that one can't get you to the same place as the other, but one is more valuable because of the time and the intricate detail that was put in. I, re- I, watched, I watched a lot of car stuff, and I watched a, a, a documentary on Bentleys, and every stitch in every seat of every Bentley is hand done. You can find imperfections in those cars and you can find uh, uh, differences in those cars because they were all, but you will not find a difference in value. You just find a, a difference in character because each one was intimately created. So today, put your shoulders back. Start carrying yourself with confidence. Because the psalmist said this. I will give thanks and praise to you. For for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. And my soul knows it very well. I see young people today. I see older people today. I see people in general today searching for their identity. And I believe the reason is because they have been tricked or lied to about their value. That's why I refuse to preach and teach about a God that's mad. My Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed on him would not perish but have everlasting life. He, I don't know the God that you serve, but the one that I serve is not schizophrenic. And he would not give his most valuable possession for your soul had he not valued you with the highest and utmost respect. So how do we maintain our value within ourselves? Because you have a choice today to walk in your value or to allow this world and your enemy, the devil, to devalue you. The first thing, I've got three things. The first thing is you have nothing to prove. To maintain your value, you have nothing to prove. Your value is not based on performance. Now, I'm not talking about your value at your job. Your value at your job is based on your performance. Almost anything in this world 
the value of it is based on the performance of it, right? But today I'm telling you that the value of your soul and your spirit and your, the person that you are is not valued and it's not arrived at. That value is not arrived at by your performance. When Jesus in the book of Luke was in the wilderness and he was being tempted by the devil and the devil said, oh, you can, I know you're hungry, so go ahead and turn that rock into a, a piece of bread. And he said to him, he said, man cannot live by bread alone. In other words, what he was saying is it doesn't matter. Yes, you know I could do it, and I know I could do it, but I don't have to perform some act to know how valuable I am to my Father in heaven. I'm here to tell you today that Satan will use every peer tactic. He will use every kind of, of, of emotional and social thing that he can to pressure you. As a child of the Most High God, you cannot be possessed. But you better bet your sweet bippy, you can be oppressed. And when you're oppressed, you feel pressured to do things that you don't have to do to earn your value. Or to prove your value. Another thing that I suggest to you to do to maintain your value is be secure in who you are. Today, brand names are so important. Now, when I start saying these things, I'm not, I'm not throwing shade on what you buy. Hey, if you work hard and you earn the money and you want to pay whatever you want to pay for whatever you have, But there's people that pay thousands of dollars for tennis shoes. There's people that pay thousands of dollars for purses, for dresses, and for suits. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. I want to I wanna buy what I want to buy just the same as anyone else does. But your name is more important than any brand name that you can acquire be secure in who you are don't allow this world to say you have to carry this to fit in with the ladies you don't have to drive this gentlemen to be looked at as a respected businessman your value is in the one that created you and you will understand that not because you go and you fill your uh, closet full of Versace but you will know that after you have spent time in your closet on your knees. After you have spent uh, intimate time with him and you have read your Bible and you know what that Bible says about you. That Bible says that you were wonderfully and beautifully created in your mama's womb before you ever saw the light of this earth and the last thing don't give away your identity your value is not based on people's support of who they say you should be. Would you would you guys help me real quick? If I was a sports guy, I might collect baseball cards, but I don't collect those. 
And I did not start collecting guitars because I set out to be a guitar collector. But I looked around not too long ago, and I have somewhere between 50 and 75 guitars. And some of them are very valuable. Some of them are not. Some of them have made me quite a bit of money. Some of them have cost me quite a bit of money. But each one of them, and I picked these particular four when I started talking about and thinking about value. The world thinks that you need to be in your thinking, in your ideologies, in your doctrine, in your persona. The world believes and thinks and pressures us that we must be the most expensive. We must be the newest, the latest. We must use all the new catchphrases. And, and once again, I do want to reiterate, I'm not downing anything about any of that other than the fact that's not where your value lies. Because in front of you are four guitars. And each one of these guitars hold a significance to me. For instance, this guitar is the newest guitar I have. It's probably got the, the fewest scratches on it. I wanted a small guitar because when you're writing songs or when you're... Um, playing sitting down like I do quite a bit this is what they call a three quarter size guitar it's smaller and it's the newest guitar I got and it's the cheapest guitar I've ever owned where you stand in the world with the latest clothing and the latest catchphrases does not value or make your value go up. There's no scratches on this guitar. It sounds pretty good. I, can, I could play it today and you probably would not know the difference in this guitar and any other guitar, but I would. Not because of the value that the company that created it put on it, but because of my desire and what it does for me. I have a value on this guitar inside of me, and I got to tell you, it's not my first go-to. On the other end, this guitar is over 100 years old. The best I can figure it, as I was told and when, I was, when it was given to me, it's almost 150 years old. It's a beautiful guitar. It sounds good. It's got a couple cobwebs in it I didn't notice until I got out of these lights. But <laughs> My office is a little dark, sorry. But when I look at this guitar, I'm just going to be honest with you. What this guitar does more for me than anything is I think about, because the, the man that gave it to me told me about his ancestors they would take this guitar on wagon trains and they would, they would carry this in the back of the covered wagon and they would get it out and they would play it at night around the campfire. I look at this guitar and I think about all the stories and I think about all the notes and wonder who held this guitar. So this guitar is valuable to me but, but for a completely different reason than that one over there is. It has a different purpose. In my life. And then I go to this guitar. This guitar is the most expensive guitar I've ever purchased. I sold a piece of lake property that LaDonna and I had, and when I sold it, I treated myself. But this guitar is a 75th anniversary edition. It's a D an HD28 Martin guitar. It has Mother of Pearl inlay down the neck that says WSM, Grand Ole Opry. I saw these on TV. I saw different stars. There was 650 of these commissioned to be made. 
And after they commissioned guitars with C.F. Martin, they fulfill those as requested or purchased. They will not make more than 650, or they wouldn't at that time, but they only made what was actually purchased and, and had purchase orders for. So there was, I believe, and I spoke, when I bought this, I spoke to the, the sales rep at, at Martin in Pennsylvania, and this guitar is, I believe it's, and we could look in here and find out, but I believe it's 534 out of 575 made. And this guitar sounds wonderful. Do you know the difference in this guitar and this guitar? This guitar, the little one over here, is a good guitar. But it's made on an assembly line. And I guarantee you there was a bunch of other guitars made the same day that one was made. This guitar is handcrafted. This guitar was made by one person and that person signed it. This guitar is something that, see, I, I keep the rest of these guitars, to be honest, out, sitting out in my house. You walk in my house and none of these are, are a part of this, but I have like five guitars sitting in my living room. You never know what mood you're in. Can I get an amen back here? Okay, thank you very much. But this guitar is very valuable to me. Matter of fact, there was a, a group called the Isaacs when they were inducted as members of the Grand Ole Opry. Becky Isaacs called me and said, hey, will you sell me your guitar? And I said, uh, no, thank you very much. God bless you. But I wanted this because I love the Grand Ole Opry and it means something to me. This is the most expensive guitar that I own. But it's not the most valuable to me. This guitar is the most valuable to me. And you say, now what, Pastor Jackie? Why would that guitar trigger tears out of you? When I was 17 years old, I wanted this guitar. I wanted a guitar exactly like this one. And uh, my dad went and put it in a layaway. He was paying off. And my dad died on December 21st. He went in the hospital in, uh, on Thanksgiving, two days before Thanksgiving, and then he died on December 21st. And the reason this guitar is so valuable to me is because my dad went and picked it out, and he put it in layaway. And I remember the day after we got back from West Virginia, we buried him and my mom gave me the rest of the money and I went to that music store and I, I got that guitar out of layaway. That guitar has traveled all over the country with me. I stood on the stage at a, as a 17, 18 year old boy in Pigeon Forge night after night, six nights a week and I'd play this guitar. This guitar still to this day is more familiar to me on the fretboard it feels better to me in my hand. It's not the most expensive. It's not the most historic. It's not the newest. But it's the most valuable to me. Because I know what it took to put this guitar in my hand. I know what it meant for this guitar to be put in my hand. And I know how this guitar has served me through all the years that I've owned it. You may not be the flashiest in town. 
you may not have enough money to carry the most expensive bags or wear the, the nicest shoes. You may not go to college in a few days and be able to live in your own apartment like some others can. You may not retire and be able to follow your dream right now of going around the country in a, in a RV. You may not have all those abilities right now. But that, my friend, has nothing to do with how God values you. What you can do in front of man, you can be the, the most blemishless. You can be the, most, the one that has been the most places. You can have the most significance and have, be the most expensive. But the one... <laughs> that is willing to spend time in a prayer closet. The one that is willing to give their heart, their life, their, their, their dreams to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The one that sees how much He values you for you is going to be able to step out into your dream. It's not because of all the things that the world says. There's nothing wrong. I'm going to say it once more. There's nothing wrong with having. We preach prosperity and I'm not ashamed of that. But prosperity does not start with your checkbook. Prosperity starts with your soul. I would that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Your value today was determined a long time ago. It is not determined by the people putting pressure on you to be this or become that. Your value is because there's a king in heaven and he decreed that you're the head and not the tail. He put the blessing on you as a child of the Most High God. You will overcome. You will not be overcome if you trust in the one that values you the most. Thank you so much for watching this sermon. We hope it encouraged you. Check out more of Apostle Jack's sermons to stay encouraged throughout the week. We also do live streams on Sunday mornings at 10 and Wednesday night chapels at 6.30. We would love for you all to stay connected, so go like and follow all of our socials. Life is so beautiful with Jesus and community. So, so join, join the fam! fam.